Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. My name is Tim Rumsey. Pastor David Salazar is with me, and we look forward to studying today's topic with you. The lesson today is titled, A Day of Healing. As we continue studying the Sabbath, what it meant for God's people back in Bible times, but especially what it means for us today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we uh, look forward to the next 15 minutes or so as we uh, have this opportunity to open your word, to study together once again. Thank you for each person that is able to join us, Lord, and uh, just pray that you will continue working in their lives, that you will bless each of our listeners, and that uh, they may experience more fully the blessings of the Sabbath uh, this coming week uh, than perhaps uh, they have before. And we thank you for your promise to do this and to work these miracles in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, our topic today is titled, A Day of Healing, and we'll be looking at the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath of the Bible. In this light, we're going to be looking at several of the miracles that Jesus performed on Sabbath and uh, looking at the lessons from those. So if you, ha- you do have your Bible, let's turn first to Matthew chapter 12. And our first story is found in verses 9 through 13. Matthew chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. Now, we have a number of stories that we're going to try to uh, cover today. So for time, we're not going to read all of these verses, but we will summarize what happens and uh, then, of course, discuss the lessons here. David, can you summarize for us uh, the miracle that Jesus performs here in this particular passage? Correct, uh, Tim. Here we have a man who was had a hand withered, and he was in the synagogue. He was on the Sabbath day, and Christ asked them if he could do um, if if there was a, any of them among you that could have one sheep, uh, if it fall into a pit or in the Sabbath day, they wouldn't rescue or save them. So he says at verse twelve, he says, "How much then is much is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days." And then he said to the man, stretch for thy hand, and immediately this man's hand was restored to full health. Hmm. And as usually happened when Jesus performed a miracle on the Sabbath, uh, he ended up being persecuted for it. Uh, Very often those that were healed were also persecuted as well. And, you know, David, one of the things that fascinates me here is that Jesus refers to this sheep in the pit. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And he's really trying to show them where their misplaced values are, isn't he? Absolutely. Uh, Because they got all worked up that Jesus would perform a miracle to improve a human life on the Sabbath. But he's really pointing out their hypocrisy here because any of them, he says, would be more than willing. They would rush to go rescue their animal, uh, you know, which represented money for them. uh, They would do anything that needed to be done to uh, protect or preserve their possessions. And... You know, what What would a sheep in the pit represent for us today? Well, it could probably be a lot of things, couldn't it? Um, anything, really, that I'm going to value uh, above those most important things in life. Like more and than I really people, see, you know, anything more that takes more the, people. Yeah, people may, may, mainly, you know, that's what we'd say, whether it's, you know, something in your house. I remember briefly a story, you know, uh, this gentleman had, uh, you know, he, he was in church and all of a sudden, he just rushes, you know, goes home and, uh, and uh, you know, I, you know, I ask him, you know, as he's been a, a, a somebody important in the church, uh, why he had to leave so fast as he had gone home. He's like, well, I just got an alert in my phone that uh, I had left a uh, door open and, you know, um, I, I had the alert and had to go, you know, make sure that nothing came, you know, nothing happened, nothing was missing <laughs> in the house as the alarm went off. And so... I mean, I, I understand it's something, you know, you do, but uh, again, oftentimes we are more, you know, we have, we don't think twice. We're willing to, you know, go save our things or protect our home. But how many of us really are willing to perhaps help a person, someone that is really in need and, and do something for them in the Sabbath? So, you know, it's uh, something that comes mm-hmm. to my mind. 
And I think there's an important principle here, uh, David, that connects with what you're talking about. And that is that true Sabbath observance, as, as God encourages us to participate in the Bible, true Sabbath observance is a strong deterrent against materialism, uh, selfishness, really any misplaced values in our lives. Because once a week, every seventh day, we have the opportunity to live outside of ourselves. Um, and, you know, praise God that he, he gave this to us. He knew that we needed this weekly uh, opportunity to be pulled out of ourselves and to focus on others and to focus on God. Hmm, that's right. Let's uh, go to the book of Mark. We'll look at our second story. This is in Mark chapter 1. And uh, again, if you have your Bible, we're looking at verses 21 through 28. Now, again, this story takes place on the Sabbath. Jesus enters the synagogue there in Capernaum, and uh, he begins teaching. The people are amazed because he teaches as one that has authority, not as the other teachers uh, there uh, and the scribes. And then uh, there is brought to him a man with an unclean spirit, and Jesus ends up casting out this spirit. The people are amazed again, uh, and uh, they say, wow, you know, what kind of a man is this? Even the, the uh, unclean spirits obey him. So uh, here we see Jesus, you know, it's kind of a similar story. He's performing a healing miracle on the Sabbath. Uh, probably some different lessons that we can pull from this story. And, and David, one that jumps to my mind is that God is more powerful than the devil and evil spirits and by extension, he's more powerful than sin. This is something, too, that we need to be reminded of, isn't it, uh, in right. our life and our world here today? And so, again, true Sabbath observance, the healing that Jesus works here on the Sabbath, a uh, powerful lesson that he is more powerful uh, than our enemy, the devil. And that's something that we need to be encouraged about. Absolutely. But another thing that comes to my mind of this specific, this interesting concept here, this story, it's that this man was in the synagogue. He was another Sabbath keeper, a worshiper, if you will. And what he tells Jesus, what he, the way that he starts, you know, this is not some lunatic crazy running around, you know, without any clothes or just, mm. just a, you know, madman. This man, it's a worshiper. You know, at least in the appearance it is. He's in the synagogue. He's he's there. And when he sees Jesus, he tells him to leave him alone uh, because he knows who he is. He's the Holy One of God. Now, you know, you would think, you know, if you look at it, you know, just in the in the exterior thing, and you would think this man actually was a good believer, you know, a good worshiper. But in the contrary, Jesus knew that what this man was saying Although it could be in certain things true, the concept was that he was trying to bring a, a you know a, a, bring a thinking to the people that th this man be, be, you know there was an imposter that he was not real he was not really the God, you know son of God he wanted to discredit Christ and so uh, my point is that you know we could be still in church worshiping God. And yet our life and is not really transformed by God. And we may even say the right things, but the spirit that is within us could be an evil spirit, could not be the spirit of God. So as you mentioned, Tim, God has more power. And if we are truly seeking the Lord with all our hearts, if we're truly willing to be, you know, those that believe God and, and worship him in spirit and truth, both things, we will be, you know, receiving of God healing and restoration, and again, a, a different experience in the Sabbath, and not just uh, exterior or, or secular way of worship. Hmm. You know, David, I think many times those of us that live in the uh, developed, civilized, uh, materialistic West, uh, Western culture, we, uh, we look at these stories of devil possession, as you were kind of mentioning, you know, and Okay, we don't see people frothing at the mouth, usually, you know, running around with chains hanging off their arms and so forth. And we're tempted to think, hey, this is not something we have to deal with or worry about. It's not and real I think, here. <clears throat> right. But I, I think your point is such an important one. It very much is a real thing. It just takes a different form much of the time. Absolutely. And we can be just as uh, under control of deception and, uh, you know, the power of the evil one. 
uh, as many of these unfortunate folks that we read about in the Bible or hear about, you know, from the mission lands and so forth, it just might look a little bit different. But again, the test is, are we, the things we're doing, the things we're saying, uh, my motivations in life, do they match up with the word of God? And if not, then uh, I need a savior. <laughs> I need a Absolutely. savior anyways, but I need, I need to be saved from, from something that's controlling me. Tim, and, and you know, again, we have to prove you know, the Bible says prove all the spirits, you know, we have to prove, you know, that uh, it is, you know, things that are according to the word of God and, and you know, they speak according to God and they have the fruits of the spirit that really shows us that someone is following the Lord. But there can be, and and I believe that one of the Satan's last deceptions will be to bring a, a spiritualism into uh, God's, you know, uh, keeping, Sabbath keeping people uh, in a way where people are more, interested in an experience than really honoring the Lord in their lives and obeying him in his word about just having a feeling, having a ecstasy, if you will, a uh, type of relationship. And the Sabbath is not, is not conducive to that. The Sabbath, it could, takes you, if you really look at the Sabbath, it's about, uh, you know, taking you to remember who the creator is, remembering that he can create in you a new creature, that you can be free from uh, sin in your life, that you can receive the power to be safe from evil, and that you can also be a channel of light, of blessing to others. is not is not about how you necessarily have to experience, you know, uh, you know yourself if you are excited or, or have an emotional thing. It's about more than important than that. It's about connecting with God and resting with him, knowing that he can be and will be with you in this uh, time. So it's, it's a blessing yeah, yeah. here, the Sabbath. So anyway, let's continue <laughs> with the third story. Sorry about yeah. <laughs> that. Well, we've got uh, just over two minutes left. So despite our best efforts, we're not going to get to all four or five of the stories we wanted to. But let's go to John chapter 9. Very briefly here, Jesus performs yet another miracle on the Sabbath. This time he heals a man born blind. And... Um, Many people, most people believed back then, including Christ's disciples, that if you were born with a problem like this, it was because of sin in your life or maybe your parents' life. And and Jesus, in this story, he really refutes that very strongly. And he said, this man uh, and that was was uh, this miracle happened this way so that the the uh, glory of God can be revealed. And just to kind of shortcut the story, because we have a minute and a half here, and David, one lesson I get from this story in John chapter 9 is that the seventh day Sabbath is a day that God has chosen to uh, reveal his works and his power and his glory. Um, he does it every day, but especially on the Sabbath. I, I cannot agree with you more. I believe that if the Sabbath, as we look at it, rightly so with with the eyes of the lord and we, how he wants us to see him it reveals who he is reveals that loving character of god that in the sabbath as we were mentioning i believe yesterday in the in regards to the equality of of what it means you know all but before god all of us are equal you know it shows us that he loves us individually that he reveals who he is that it also tells us that you're, we're, we can experience a relationship with him so important, so close, that he takes time to set this time to spend with us. I mean, it's just, it's just a personal uh, uh, sh uh, demonstration of his love for man. So may God bless us on this Sabbath day as we study together and worship him. Amen to that. Well, we hope you've been blessed by the time that we spent in God's word. It has gone quickly, and the old saying is, time flies when you're having fun. And I know that David and I have had fun as we study, and um, we just hope that you will uh, have a blessed day. We hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. Don't forget to go online to pathwaytoparadise.org. You can find those study guides and teacher notes for this week. We'll see you tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.